Tulsa, Oklahoma. The Bearcats with a big come from behind victory tonight. Down by 11 with less than six minutes to go. 5.58 to be exact. Cincinnati did not give up a field goal in the last 5.58. And the Bearcats came back to win the game. 57 to 55. We are joined. Can you hear me, Dan? We can hear you. Okay. Yep. We are joined courtside by victorious head coach Mick Cronin. Tough night uh, for much of the way, but uh, boy, a gutsy last 5.58 for your team. Well, we finally got some shots to fall. Two things happened. We got some shots to fall, and we were able to finish possessions with a defensive rebound, which was a struggle all night. Uh, you know, I've told you, told you numerous times, I've told our team the most important thing, I've been trying to keep them fresh so they're excited to play. Uh, the most important thing is not uh, is not coming out and having another team be more physical and take the fight to you and win every uh, loose ball category. Uh, and I've been giving the same speech over and over, but, you know, uh, all you got to do is look around the country. Seven of the top ten lose. Multiple teams continue to get beat. So you got to give our kids credit. They continue to find a way to win. I think you got to give Tulsa credit. Uh, you know, they were more physical than us for most of the evening. Following their misses, uh, they were just – they were obviously focused on – being physical against us and winning the winning the rebounding war, and uh, you know it, it, that'll get you beat, and it almost got us beat. Now, late in the last five minutes, we held them to one shot, and we also came up with some deflections and some steals, which won us the game. Uh, you know, ten steals ultimately made up for the lack of rebounding. And it got us some easy baskets in transition. And then what happens is you get into a little flow and then shots fall for you. Uh, but we felt we were able to get some stops down the stretch. Like I said, uh, you know, it was, it, it, was, it was tough to get a rebound at times, which was really the killer for us. I mean, we blocked a shot and didn't even go after the ball. And they end up getting a, a layup or two free throws out of it, which should have been a, a a layup for us, and that just you know that went on predominantly all you know all night, and uh, we were we were trying to shoot our way to victory instead of scrap our way to victory, uh, and that's a dangerous thing. The last five minutes, I thought we scrapped our way to victory, and you got you know you got to give the kids credit. That's why uh, the game's never over till it's over. Let me take you in the first half, coach. Here, you start out, you're down nine nothing. Yeah. And for the most part of that first half, you're at a nine-point deficit. But I'm looking over at the bench, and you're just as calm as you're <laughs> up by nine, but you know your team. So what's going through your mind? Well, I just kept trying to explain to those guys that uh – uh, other than adjustment-wise, we had to get out of man-to-man. We were struggling in our man. They're a smaller, quicker team, uh, and I, I was very feel for, fearful of their dribble penetration. They opened the game with multiple layups, uh, beating us off the dribble, uh, and they were in a comfort zone. So I was made, try, deciding what adjustment we were going to make defensively. But at the same time, uh, we opened a game – Missing wide open shots, miss a layup, miss wide open shots. But I, you, you got to start trying to scrap your way to victory. You got to get second shots. Uh, you got to get your feet underneath you. I kept telling the guys, you, you know, I believe we got the better team when we play. The key is going to be, though, do we get out scrapped? You know, and, and the one thing that, you know, Kevin Johnson says in timeout huddles that helps me the whole time is, you know, we got to worry about defense. I mean, he's constantly saying that. So, it's you know, he's a senior. And he understands uh, that hustle and scrap and, it, you know, how important it is to victory. Uh, and, and you can't worry about whether you're missing shots or not. You got to worry about taking good ones and going and trying to get a, an offensive rebound. Uh, so... No, you know, there's no no need to panic. I mean, it is what it is. You know, I I got upset a few times. You didn't see in some timeout huddles and some stuff that's just mind-boggling to me of people just ripping the ball away from our guys, which you know we don't stand for that. In the you know in the red and black, I'm, you know that's not something I really allow. When you look at, they did a good job. Tulsa did a good job of of 
chasing you off the three-point line. They were really getting out to the three-point shooters, and I thought the saving grace of the offense, because your team always finds a way to adjust and figure out what they're doing and then counter that. And what the, the thing that I thought that really helped is the flashes to the middle. Yeah. That was wide open. Kevin made a couple plays there. Clark made a couple plays there. Kyle Late had two yeah. good baskets. But that was the, that was open, and all of a sudden the team started to take what the defense gave them, and you start to creep back in. Yeah, they, you know, it, it's – it's uh, we do it, so – it's tough when you know, teams play a matchup zone the way Tulsa does, and they scramble and switch, and they do an excellent job of it. They they really do. They do an excellent job of it, and then on, so it takes you a while to get comfortable against it. Uh, you got to get against teams like that. You got to get some easy baskets in transition, and then the other thing that happened is in the second half they ran the shot clock down every time. Yes, they didn't shoot the ball until under ten a lot of times. 3-2-1 before they took a shot, which really shortened the game. So it puts a premium on every possession. Well, I was trying to explain it to guys, when you're trying to make a comeback, you cannot turn the ball over. Jacob had a charge. Uh, Kyle had a turnover. But other than that, we score on like eight of our last nine possessions if you li- eliminate those two turnovers. So you got to maximize every possession in a game like that. Uh, it, it, so it's a learning experience for our guys. I thought they did a great job. Uh, defensively, obviously, in the last four minutes of the game, even up until the last play, we didn't even allow them to get a shot off. We were able to converge on the dribbler and never let him get all the way to the rim, um, which uh, Trey Scott made an excellent play on that. Uh, but we got loose balls when we got those stops. We got the rebound and we got loose balls. And it was a game where we lost in that category for 35 minutes, really, until the last five minutes where we came up with the steals and the loose balls. And it gave us a chance to win. But then, yeah, obviously, we knocked down some shots. And, uh, you know, it's good to have Troy. You know, I got a lot of faith in him. I know I had a timeout. We got the last steal. And I knew the shot clock was off. And uh, it was no hesitation in my mind just to get everybody away from him. And, uh, and I had a feeling he was going to get the foul line jumper. He, you know, he had a size advantage. And uh, the guy was probably going to be too concerned with him driving to the basket. And uh, I'll take him in that that slot every time. Uh, obviously, he ended the Xavier game with that shot. He got a little closer this time and, and uh, won the game against Tulsa. So, yeah, big big shot for him. And, uh, you know, obviously, if you're in my situation, uh, it's not a hard decision, uh, you know, to not call time out there when you got the ball in the senior's hands like that late in the game. 7.49 to go. The under eight timeout. You're down by seven. And you start to go offense, defense. You start taking Kyle out, putting Kevin Johnson. Yeah, see, Kyle had four. Exactly. You go offense, defense. But your defense turned up. And that last seven and a half minutes, Tulsa had ten turnovers at that point. They turned it over six times. And your defense began to start converting. And the offense began to start making some shots. Well, that's what happened. Got some easy buckets on a couple steals. So six steals. In the last seven minutes was the difference in the game. You know, multiple guys got them, uh, and we stepped it up. You know, uh, you know, for the game, we give up 40 percent, uh, which is you know high for us. But uh, I'll say one other thing. You know, about today, I thought it was huge. We made free throws. When you're struggling to score from the field, you must capitalize at the foul line. And uh, their zone did a great job of keeping us out of the paint for the most part. You know, but we made up for it with uh, with points in the paint. But we lose, or I mean, with points off turnovers. You know, we have 18 big points off their turnovers. Most of them late in the game. Uh, but you don't want to come out and you get get you, you can't make a living giving up losing the points in the paint by eight and second chance points by six. You're going to get beat most nights when you do that. Uh, so you know, we, obviously we miss uh, Nasir. You know, hopefully. Uh, you know, he's, uh, his swelling will go down. He's got a bruise, and, you know, we keep evaluating him day to day. I thought his physicality we, we really missed on the interior to, tonight. I mean, he, he's become an integral part of this team, and uh, they pounded us inside for a good, a, a good time tonight. You know, we're an interesting team. If you see this, our guards do a better job of fighting around the post than our big guys. I think Troy, Kevin, Jake, Jaron, they're, they're excellent. They I mean they, they fight around the post and almost never get scored on when they switch on to the other team's big guys. So we may be better off just letting just continue to do that than let Kyle and Quad just try to space out on the perimeter and 
make them take a, a tough jumper over those guys if they can not get beat off the dribble because uh, our, our guards, are they're, they're just better post defenders. You know, I've never coached a team like that. I mean, it's not even close either. It is what it is. I mean, it, it's really amazing. Finally, Coach, we'll, ask, we'll end with this. I've been saying to, to the legends and all everybody fans that I can sing from the rooftops that this team is different. It's a special team. And I want you to talk a little bit about what makes this team special because last year, Dan and I talked about over the broadcast, you're losing these games. Oh, yeah. And this year, this team refuses to lose. No no lead is safe against the, the team because of the, the deflections and the pride that the senior leadership takes in this game. Well, I, I think uh, Kyle's made a huge difference in the uh, in the mojo and the karma uh, and the spirit on our team. Uh, you know, he's not perfect obviously uh and neither am i but he never he never lacks uh for intensity passion preparation and i think that he's lifted a lot of guys up now obviously you got a great player off the bench in jaron cumberland justin jennifer who didn't play much tonight way better basketball player you know obviously nasir brooks is going to be a big time player for us so you know trey scott tremendous attitude all he wants to do is help his team win um so, you know, obviously uh, Jacob Evans is a big-time player. So, you know, our, our, our talent level's up, no question about that. So it's a combination of some things. You know, I think there's no doubt our our, our, our overall talent level is just better uh, than it's been recently. Uh, you know, people forget about we won this league three years ago. we got a guy who's average of 16 a game in the NBA on our team. Justin Jackson was pretty dang good. Uh, you know, and, and we've had some other teams are really good. People tend to forget uh, our Sweet 16 team. But these guys, uh, they, they, they definitely like each other. Uh, and, and I think that, uh, that that has a lot to do with it. They enjoy playing together. I think there's no doubt about that. But I will say this, you know, as a coach, the guys made shots down the stretch now. I mean, you know, Kyle slipped into that post. Three in a row. Those are not easy shots. <laughs> so, you know, yeah. Car- karma's great and his energy's great. Those are hard shots. You know, he, he can get you some buckets when you need buckets. Uh, and then you combine the fact with some, you know, there's different nights. Kevin has a big night. Jaron has a big night. Gary's always Gary. Troy's playing so much better here in the last month of the season. So, uh you got to be able to win some games. If you're going to continue to win, you got to win in different ways. And obviously tonight, I'm still not sure how we won. I know we've, tried to, we've tried to figure it out. Right. But really all I'm looking to do is get some Gatorade, try to feel better, and go to sleep. You said one-point blowout, but we, you exceeded that. I exceeded our pregame <laughs> prediction, right. two-point blowout. Congrats on a great come-from-behind win. Thanks, guys. All right, Cincinnati wins. Racing an 11-point deficit in the final 5.58 here in Tulsa. 57.55 the final. We'll take one more time out. We'll come back and wrap things up in a moment on News Radio 700.